Before we get into the review today, I wanted to give a big shout out to Stefan. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, Stefan is the newest patron of mine. If you want to be cool like Stefan, you can head down to my link below. I'll give you a personal shout out on my review uh, and uh, get your name at the end credits and uh, get another shout out during any of my live streams if I plan to do any anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to do that because uh, yeah, I, I want to thank those that have uh, you know helped me out. So. Thank you, Stefan, and with that, let's get on with the review. Fire Foreteller by Lars Frederick Froisley. Uh, so Lars Frederick Froisley is the keyboardist for Wobbler, and Wobbler is a pretty standout uh, modern uh, retro prog band uh, coming all the way from Norway. And, uh, you know, um, Lars being the keyboardist of that, he's one of the centerpieces of the band. You know, one of the things that really draw me to Wobbler is the intricacies of the keyboards, the interlay of the synth, and all of that passion, all of that energy, and essence is really found on his first solo record of Fire Foretelling. Uh, one of the things I love about this album, outside of the you know big power rock and uh, big prog essence, is how the album is structured. You know, it's opened and closed by two pretty beefy prog tracks, both edging into the 17 minute mark. You know, both are uh, the first one being almost 17 minutes with um, you know the opening track the closing track at 16 and a half minutes now I think most of these are in Norwegian and I think like all the lyrics are in Norwegian as well so I'm not going to take a stab at any of the you know tr titles of these tracks because there's only four of them I already mentioned the first two and the middle two tracks are right around the six to seven minute mark so I, I really do love this kind of sandwich essence that we have, you know, opening and closing with two bigger tracks and having two mid tracks that are more in the digestible sense. And the other thing that this album does really, really well is the ebb and flow within the individual tracks are handled very well, especially within those two larger pieces. Now, in past reviews, when I'm looking at this type of music, I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes say like there wasn't any perch or there was a really good ebb and flow, but I didn't have anywhere that landed. And within the first track of this record, I, I can't say that, you know, like I, I can say that this has some really beautiful ebb and flow, but it's all tied around this one passage, this one kind of oomph that I really do love and I come back to time and time again. This is what really grounds the track and what makes me come back to it because there's this landing, there's this perch that solidifies this song that everything kind of moves around so that the almost 17 minutes really does go by so quickly that I don't realize I've just listened to 17 minutes worth of music. Uh, now that's not to say that this isn't dense, this isn't to say that there's not a lot going on as there very much is, it's just it moves by at such a natural pace that it doesn't feel as runtime. And I really do love those two smaller tracks as well, and I also love the variety of sounds that Lars is bringing to the table. As I've mentioned, you know, with Wobbler, he likes to use a lot of different sounds within that, but I, I like the fact that he's using a lot of different actual instruments. You know, the second track opens up with a harpsichord that's really rooting the song in this kind of renaissance style, this feeling of it that allows for the synth when it comes in to provide a little bit more of that accent that I really enjoy. And obviously Lars is wearing a lot of influences on his sleeve. You know, the third track has a very prominent Emerson, Lake and Palmer feel to it, not only within the soundscapes, but also within this, uh, the actual playing styles itself, which makes perfect sense. But I love that drive. I love the energy. Uh, you know, it does showcase that Lars is able to not only build atmosphere, but also be the uh, the driving force on there. And that third song really does kind of take the, the bull by the horns and just like, ah, it kind of continues on with it. The fourth track is one of the more unique tracks off of the album. I mean, there's only four, so, but I, I also feel like it's one of the more unique tracks in terms of anybody from Wobbler as well. It, once again, it has this really meaty root to the track. There's something for me to grab onto and kind of remember, you know, they set it up at the beginning, they pay it off at the end. Uh, there's a lot of kind of uh, stop and go moments on this track that makes for a little bit of a disjointed 
tested listen on the first couple of spins, but upon the fifth and sixth listen, it feels a little bit more organic. It feels a little bit more natural, but it just does feel like a little bit too potholy. You know, it feels like you're driving down a city road and then all of a sudden it's like, boom, you're hitting a big pothole, not knowing that it's about to come up. Uh, so it provides a little bit of a disjointed listen at the end of the day. Uh, but I also like the, the ending of it. I just wish that there was a little bit more of a, an epicness to the ending of this instead of just having a play out be the final crescendo of this track. It kind of reminds me of my feelings of the last couple of tracks from Summit from Seven Impale, where once again, I really love the music that they were showcasing. I just wish that it kind of came together in this big cacophony, this big symphony of sound. And much like Summit, I can't fault it for what it doesn't have because what it does have is still really enjoyable and really beautiful music. So yeah, in the end, Fire for Teller is a, a really great return to this really deep, dark, you know, symphonic progressive rock that I love from bands like Wobbler, like Anglegard, uh, like All Traps on Earth, uh, you know, kind of going back into that more eclectic style that Van der Generator, Gentle Giant, and King Crimson was playing with. You know, there's this darkness, there's this dirge about it, but it's always rooted in this bigger symphony of sounds. So yeah, if you're looking for this style of music, you're definitely going to find it here. This is one of the better prog outputs this year. This is one that I've been turning back to, you know, it's got that really good, like I can sink my teeth into a lots of really fun nooks and crannies that I really enjoy. And I think you will too. In the end, I will say Fire Foretelling Her by Lars Frederick Frostley is one that I would absolutely pick up in physical format. This is one to have in your collection. If you're a big prog fan, you got to check this one out. Yeah, I think it's a really good time. Uh, this is also a really good introduction to this style of prog music because it is a little bit, you know, it's it's got a little bit of the sharp edges. Uh, you know, it's, it's very different in terms of the usual MO for the radio friendly stuff. But I think it has a lot of that more contemporary modern prog aspects that I really look out for. So give this one a spin. I think you'll really enjoy it. And that's it for me for Fire Foretelling from Lars Frederick Frolizzi. Uh, I know I probably butchered his name a couple of times, but uh, what did you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below because that's all I got. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.